We've now completed the workflow in the server. I'd just like to point out that we now have a URL that we'll be using within the viewer to display our map data. Having logged in the viewer now, we are presented with the main page which, as discussed earlier, is very similar to the server's main page with the exception of the map configuration section. We will continue with the focus on the workflow that will web enable your data. The next task the administrator will want to do is create a data connection to the services created in the server. This is accomplished by making a connection to the service on the data connections page. First, you must enter your data connections name. Then you'll need to select one of the four connection types, WMS, WFS, WMTS, or a point of interest, support it, and the version number if applicable. As you may recall, I had copied the URL of a demo WMTS service in the server to be added in our Google base map. I will now create a WMTS service connection to the service and enter the URL in the URL text field, as you can see, and click Save. We are now ready to incorporate the map layers available through the data connection into the theme. But before I do that, I'd like to demonstrate how easy it is to create and add an effective graphical element such as a point of interest to your maps using USGS's GeoReference RSS or GeoRSSS feed for the latest earthquakes in the world. I will create a point of interest feature to be used in our Google base map. Entering the viewer now, I will add a name such as earthquakes and select POI as a, po as a type. I will enter the URL from the USGS's website and I will select one of the four supported formats which includes GRSS Simple, GML2, GeoJSON, or KML. I'll use GRSS Simple for our example. Note that the supported coordinate system is WGS84 or EPSG4326. And finally, I'll select an icon to represent your format. The viewer includes a number of land and marine themed POIs. I will select one that indicates a hazard for the best graphical impact. Click Save and you now have a POI configured to use in your maps. We are now ready to create a theme and are one step closer to viewing your maps online. The use of themes is fairly new in SFE. The system administrator can group related map data together, for example map layers and points of interest. Some sample themes might be a fire services theme that includes roads, fire stations, coverage zones, civic addresses, fire hydrants, and building footprints. Or a tourism theme might include hotels, parks, restaurants, trails, beaches, and more. Okay, let's start adding to our Google base map. As you can see, the theme is comprised of a name, a coordinate system, we're using EPSG 3857, which is a Google supported format. We've preset the number of zoom levels and we've also preset the bounding box. As indicated earlier, we are using Google Maps physical view as our base map. We are now ready to add our map layers. You will recall the data connection we made to the demo WMTS service in the server. We will use this connection to add our single map layer or the layer group which has numerous layers associated with it. When drawn, in the viewer, these multiple layers will be drawn as a single layer. I will now add Earthquakes PY created using a GeoRSS feed. I could also add selectable layers if a WFS service existed for these layers, but I will keep this simple and show you how a WFS service has been created in a different theme. Now you can click Save and your theme is ready to be viewed. Had this been a new theme and not an existing one, you would need to enter the role page, select a user, and add this theme to the role of the user. I'll go to the viewer to view this theme. Note that our demo theme has a physical view of Google Maps. The draw speed for this service will be a bit slow as we zoom into an area. That is because this is the first time these tiles have been drawn. They are also being cached to be used again when the draw request is remade.
as you can see, if we zoom out, they will begin to draw a little faster because now they have been pre-cached. Now I would also like to point out the points of interest I created using Earthquake's GRSS seed. Simply by clicking on a POI, a pop-up window now displays the attributes of this point of interest. This is just one way to add a graphical element to your map. A little later I will demo a few more. To highlight the speed of our WMTS service, I have precast another theme using exact same layers as in our demo theme. As we move in and out and pan, notice how quickly your map draws. Keeping in mind this works as well for large data sets as it does for small. I have also incorporated points of interest from Flickr, an online photo sharing community using the GeoRSS format to demonstrate the interoperability of our product. In comparison, I have created another theme, again using all the same data, but now with a traditional WMTS service. As we enter and zoom in and pan out, notice that the speed in which your map and data draws is much slower than the new WMTS service. This is to demonstrate the power of our WMTS service. What if you didn't want Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps as your base map, but you had a large data set, say of your municipality, and you wanted to draw just like Google Maps? No problem. As demonstrated in this theme, I created a map with data using a WMTS service. The data is your base map, and it now draws just like Google Maps. Notice how quickly your map layers are drawing as you zoom in and out and pan over the map. Using the My Maps feature in Google Maps, I was able to create a point of interest for City Hall and POIs for buildings of interest using a GORSS feed. When selected, the pop-up window displays attributes and even hyperlinks to designated websites. I've also created a point of interest using KML file, a format supported by Google. Provided by an online gas station, I was able to create and then display gas station points of interest throughout my map. Again, showing the interoperability of Spatial Fusion Enterprise with other mapping applications and industry standard tools. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to demonstrate the tools and features available through the viewer. As we zoom in, something that users of SFE 5.1 or 5.2 should notice is the improvements, the smoothness and sharpness of the lines being drawn. On the top right hand side of the window, you will see our toolbar. Presently, the pan and previous view are active. The next button is the point and range selection tool. I will activate it and demonstrate both the point and range selection. When you make a point selection on a single feature, the result of the selection is returned in a pop-up window with all the attribute feature information. If multiple features have been selected on a point or range, then the results are returned in the data grid as shown. Clicking on a single attribute will highlight the feature in the map with the information in a pop-up window. You can use the clear button at any time to clear your selections. The next tool I like to demonstrate is the data extraction tool. This tool allows you to extract selected data to a specific format such as GML, KML or GeoJSON to share with third parties. Open the tool. If the current view is your selected area, select your format type and layers, click download then save your results. You can also do a custom point or range extraction similar to the point and range selection feature. Click the selection button within the tool, make either a point or range selection. If not happy with the area selected, simply move the point or range box to a desired area. Select format type, layers and click download. You can now save your file and share it with others. The last feature I'd like to demonstrate is our print feature. Click the print link and another window pops up with your present map view. Our map window is dynamic, so you can adjust your view prior to sending it to the printer. Add a note at the top of the page and then click print and your map is sent to the printer. The last theme I'd like to demonstrate is the WFS service using OpenStreetMap as a base map. 
Say you are the manager for the Public Works Department and need to do some analysis and planning for your next year's maintenance on streets and roads for your municipality. You may want to use Google Map or OpenStreetMap as a base map as it provides a view of your municipality's roads, streets and buildings. And you don't want to clutter it up with your data, but you would still like to have selectable layers available to you in order to determine, say, the date of when the street or road was last paved on a particular area of your city whether or not it is the street or road is composed of concrete or asphalt, and perhaps other useful attributes. Using your base map as a guide to the location, you simply use your WFS service to make a point or range selection. This does two things. One, it provides you with their desired attributes in either a pop-up window or a data grid for easy analysis. And two, makes visible on your map the selected feature. The end result is that you are now able to do analysis and planning without a map cluttered with unwanted data. To summarize the highlights of this demo, Spatial Fusion Enterprise 5.3 now supports WMTS services along with WMS and WFS. Spatial Fusion Enterprise is interoperable with OGC compliant servers and viewers and the SFE suite comes with both a server and a viewer in one package. Once again, thank you for taking the time to view our demonstration. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, you can email us at info at .com, call us at area code 506-458-8533, or visit us on the web at www.keras.com.